for three months. This was the only position that was comfortable. Or this, or this, or this. How did I get myself from having this kind of back pain, sciatic nerves, and tightness all through my hips and glutes to back to running three months later? As you saw, it was just a couple positions that were making me feel good. Laying flat on my back, laying on my side, curling up in a ball. There was not a lot that was keeping me comfortable, but these exercises, strengthening, stretching, and some massage and power work are what got me back from those positions to running in about three months. You guys came here to see the exercises. Let's not waste any time talking about it. What I will say is I'm not a doctor, I'm not a PT, I didn't go for school for all this, but I am a runner who has dealt with these issues before, and this is the worst flare up I've had since I started putting on big miles. And so for me, if you're dealing with a herniated disc causing sciatic nerve issue, this is what got me back to running. First, let's dive right in to the stretching. We have several three-way exercises. One, three-way calf stretch. Slant board, pushing off into three different directions, leaning to the right, leaning to the left, and then also straight on both legs, about 10 reps on each leg. This is great warm up. dial in those calves. As much as all the issues are going on in the glutes, going on in the hips, still getting work on that lower body. Second, and what I found loosened me up earliest in my issues with these is three-way hip lunges. And so what this is, you can do this anywhere that has a high raise thing. I use this chair here, is put your one leg up, stand back, and then just doing the same three directions that you did before. Lean forward, rotate the hips, and go in both directions. This has been my lifesaver for just loosening up. 10 on each leg, switching sides, doing the same thing. Rotating, getting in and out. Early on in my injury, this was by far the best thing that helped me out. Now it's part of every single time I warm up for a run, that's in the routine. Next is a three-way hamstring stretch. Same thing, if you're dealing with sciatic nerve like I was, man, my first time doing hamstring stretch on my bad side, my acting up side, which is my left, it looked a lot like almost a fully bent leg like you're seeing here in this video and, and like barely leaning into it. And this was actually stretching my hamstring. But now you can notice this is my bad leg, still not fully straight, but I can really lean into it and again, doing the three different ways. You're not wanting to, what my PT said, overdo it to the point of pain, but you're wanting to lean into it to increase that flexibility. Again, you're not wanting to stretch the nerve because if you stretch the nerve, then you can get some real irritation from what my doctors and PT have said. Next is your ab and adductor stretch. This is a great one to do warming up, leg up, but you notice I'm facing like if you're facing the screen, you can see my leg up here, toe pointed, and you're about a uh, straight leg here, leaning in and really just going in this direction to open up this space, 10 on each side. Next is three-way hip extrusion. So for me, this is super simple. Just bend down, use that hips, really making sure we're rocking the pelvis back and forth to loosen up this space. 10 up and down. The second way is side to side excursions. And third, walking in in this direction. Last stretching exercise that I do that has really helped me out is the what my PT called sassy walks. Essentially what you're doing is the same thing as this three-way stretch, but you're doing it with a walking motion. Walk forward, get up on the toe, toss the hips sideways, kind of like you're putting a little sass into that walk, and that is opening up the same things, but you're doing it in a more mobile motion. <clears throat> Other things that I've done to really help, just different yoga stretches that my body can handle, 
little bit of back extensions to the point that's not getting my nerve and these really helped dial it in but what caused me to get in this place not just the str uh, stretching and mobility but the lack of strength in specific areas so area number two strength exercises this is what's really gotten the strength back to where i'm feeling a lot more stable when i'm run my hips are staying in the same place and i don't feel like i'm rocking in a weird direction but more a solid uh, trunk when i'm running first is the three-way lunge similar to the three-way stretching you're going to do your forward lunge you're going to do your side lunge and then you're going to do an open up and back lunge where you're taking your lunge from this direction opening up in the back and going down into your lunge 10 reps each direction this has really helped strengthen up not only the glutes but also as i'm doing my rotations and turns it's helped get all of those hips dialed in in strength the thing that i use the most now in my strength training is definitely the band work I use it in my warm-ups, I use it in my stretch routines, and there's three strong band exercises that I am doing to really help it out. Number one, banded sea walks. What we're doing is we're putting the band around our lower legs, we're stretching it out to where you can feel tension on both legs, and we're doing 10 on each leg forward, 10 on each leg backwards, where you're walking and putting your legs into a C motion and controlling it the whole way through. Do 10 forward, 10 backwards. The next exercise that I do is very simple. We've all seen them. Put the band around your lower legs and just sidewalk where you're having tension on it. The key is control for these exercises, not just allowing the band to do the work and then snapping it back out but in each leg, 10 going to the left, 10 going to the right, and really controlling that rubber band. Last, big thanks to Wahoo and their strength coach, Bryce Dobb, who has helped me out a lot in these exercises, is the band glute bridges. And so I'm doing a lot of laying flat, putting the band around the upper part of the leg, pushing out on that band, and doing 20 hip raises, after doing the band work, I'm taking the band out, putting some type of ball between my knees and doing 20 more bridge raises, but instead of pressing out, I'm pressing into the ball to get the other side of the hip muscles that is needing to strengthen up for my back exercises. Last but not least, core work, simple core work. Uh, I really half-assed it last year in my core work, really half-assed it in a lot of this area and so doing my stability core work, not the stuff to get you ripped for the beach, but that stability core work. Think planks, think side planks, think simple things that help really keep this area tight when we're running, keep the hips in line and focusing on that area. So we've hit mobility and stretching, we've hit strength, <clears throat> and last but not least where you need some help is massage in Cairo. You gotta get massage in Cairo. We can't, we as runners can't get into certain places on our own. So I can't thank rehab. I can't thank Dr. Costa enough who have helped me out in getting in with whether it's massage techniques, whether what Dr. Costa is doing with the Grassin technique. There's a lot of things that's helping me out to just get the areas I can't. And so highly recommend, yes, it may be an expense you're not used to in getting recovered. For me, it's better than a new pair of running shoes. It's gotten me back to running. And last, but is certainly not least, it's going to be interesting. So I'm about eight to nine sessions into my non-surgical decompression. This is a device that helps pull uh, the lumbar spine apart to help get hydration and get some release of tension on my lumbar spine. And then what it's doing is bringing, releasing that tension and then putting the tension back on. Like I said, I'm about nine sessions in. It is helping quite a bit. Is it a combination of all the other stuff that's happening? Maybe, potentially, but I'm gonna keep getting after it. If I'm recovering and feeling better, there's been a lot of reports, studies out there say between 70 and 89% of people respond well 
to non-surgical decompression. Gonna see if I'm one of those statistics. Those are my three areas. If you have any questions, I will in the description below list out all of the exercises and the amount of reps that I'm doing. We as runners deal with some injuries. And if I can help anybody that's dealing with this same issue, man, I'm here. Lots of information on the internet from chiropractors, from doctors, from PT about this. And I couldn't find a whole lot from an actual runner who's dealing with it. So this is what's got me back. And I'm excited to see what this does for 2022.